Hey beautiful people of the Most High God, so the Father had me put together, God resists the proud, the humble and the proud. So the opposite of being humble is proud, the opposite of being proud is humble. And about two years ago or a year ago, God made me make um, video the spirit of pride and haughtiness and the spirit of hum having a humble spirit, the spirit of so um, I'm going to link them at the bottom because the spirit of pride and haughtiness, it talks about the more of the spiritual aspect and like the spiritual warfare part of it and what you will endure from prideful people and haughty people and what happens to you when you're prideful, proud and haughty. And um, the spirit of humble veil teaches you all the blessings that come with being humble. So um, let me get into this. I don't want to hold you. 1 Peter 5 and 5, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yet yeah, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. So God wants us to be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace unto the humble. So God resists the proud and he gives grace unto the humble. All right? So if you're not proud, that means you're humble. If you're humble, if you're not humble, that means you're proud. 1 Peter 5 and 6, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. And we're going to talk about the proud women and how God punishes the proud. And um, yeah, we're going to go into the scriptures about proud women and their makeup and their attires. Um, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So when you humble yourself before God, that's when he exalts you. You don't get exaltation before God when you're proud. He brings the proud low. But when you're humble, he'll exalt you in due time, in your appointed time that he appointed for you. Now, James 4 and 6 talks more about God resisting the proud. But he gives more grace. Wherefore, he says, God... Resist the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. So it tells us that in Peter, and it tells us that in James, that God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. Now, things that happen when you're proud. Proverbs 11 and 2. When pride comes, then comes shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. So when you're prideful, that comes with shame. Psalms 119 and 21. He has rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy law, from, I mean, from thy commandments. You know, Satan fell by pride, right? You have to outrun vanity and pride to get close to God, to build the relationship that you need. You have to be humble. And God requires of you to be walk humbly with your God. We're going to read about that in Micah. Thou has rebuked the proud that are cursed. So God rebukes the proud and the curse which do err from thy commandments. Because the pride, prideful people, they won't seek God. Proverbs 29 and 23, there's a scriptures about that. A man's pride shall bring him low. So when you're prideful, it'll bring you low. That's how Satan fell from heaven. His pride brought him low. It got him cast out from heaven. And those wicked angels with him. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So when you're honored, you're honored when you're humble in spirit. God upholds you and he honors you. He exalts you. Proverbs 8 and 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. So these, if you fear God, you're going to hate what is evil. You're going to hate pride and arrogancy and, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate? These are things that God hates. God hates pride and arrogancy, the evil way, and the forward mouth. Do I hate? That's what God says to you in Proverbs 8 and 13. Now, Psalms 138 and 6, though the Lord be high, God is high. He's the highest, the most high. Yet he has respect unto the lowly. Who does God have respect unto the lowly? But the proud, he knows he knows afar off because God resists the proud. They're not near to him. Now, Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goes before destruction and a haunty spirit before a fall. So Satan was haunty before he fell and his pride is going to bring him to destruction, the lake of fire. Just as you 
whoever is prideful because pride goes before destruction. For, so you have pride before you're going to be destroyed by God and you're, you're haunty before you fall. Proverbs 29 and 23, a man's pride shall bring him low. So what does pride do? Pride brings you low. Pride makes you fall. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Now, what God says, he hates pride, arrogancy, the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Now, Proverbs 6 and 16, these six things does the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look and a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Doctrine and covenants, 42 and 40. And again, thou shalt not be proud in thy heart. Let all thy garments be plain. Your dressing, your attire, you're not supposed to be wearing proud clothes. And this is about um, your beauty and your makeup. And their beauty, the beauty of the work of thy own hands. Okay? And let all things be done in cleansiness, clean, cleansiness before me. Thou shalt not be idle. For he that is idle shall not eat the bread, nor wear the garments of the laborer. Now, this thing about beauty, proud in heart. Your garments being plain, let your beauty be of your own work of hands, God's work of hands. Proverbs 6 and 25, lust not after her beauty in thy heart, neither take, let her take thee with her eyelids. What do women put on their eyelids? Eyelashes, mascara, eyeshadow, they beautify their eyelids. God tells you don't lust after her beauty and, and her eyelids. <laughs> Because she's not a shamed-faced woman. She is a proud woman and a shameless woman before God. Ecclesiasticus 26 and 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Women who wear makeup are counted as dogs before God. But she that is shamed-faced will fear the Lord. A shamed-faced woman won't be putting makeup on her face. Because she doesn't care what people think about her. She cares what God Care, says the cares and thinks about her. She's humble before her God. She's not proud in God's face. She's not proud to care about what people think. She's humble and she's shamed face before because she fears God. Now, Jeremiah 40 and 13, if you don't believe this is about makeup, and when thou art spoiled, what will thou do? Though thou close thyself with crimson, though thou dex thee with ornaments of gold, Though thou rents thy face with paintings, so your high clothes and your high face looks. Thou rents thy face with paintings, in vain shall thou make thyself fair. So they do this to make their self pretty. What is this? Thy lovers will despise thee, they will seek thy life. What does it say about it? Lust not after her beauty in thy heart, neither be let her take thee with her eyelids. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Women who wear makeup are counted as dogs before God. Thou shalt not be proud in thy heart. Let thy garments be plain and their beauty, the beauty of thy work of thy own hands. Let the beauty be the work, the beauty of that God put on you. Not that you bought out of a store and painted on your face. 1 Timothy 2 and 9. In like manner also that women adore themselves in modest apparel. Talk about this. With shamefacedness, no makeup. You're not a shameless woman. Shameless women wear makeup. <laughs> with shamefacedness and soberity, not with broaded hair or gold or pearls or costly array. What does God hate? Proverbs 6 and 17, a proud look. These women have a proud look with their makeup on their face. And their costly apparels, they're showing off. A lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. Those things God hates. And seven are an abomination unto him. Psalms 10 and 4. The wicked through the pride of his continence. These women, the pride of their continence, their paint face, they will not seek after God. God is not in all their thoughts. They won't seek after God in his full entirety. They're not shame face. Proverbs 21 and 4. A high look. That's makeup and your costly apparel, and a proud heart. You have a proud heart because you care what people think. You don't care about God's heart and what God thinks about you wearing those things. 
and the plowing of the wicked is sin. So Proverbs 21 and 4, a high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. 2 Kings 9 and 30, and when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it and she painted her face and tired her head, tied her head and looked out at the window. Oh, for seduction. Jezebel was not a shame-faced woman. She was a shameless woman. And God fed her to the dogs. Genesis 38 and 15. When, when Judah saw her, he thought her to be a whorelet because she covered her face. You cover your face with makeup. Whorelets wear makeup to cover their face. To, that's what God wants you to know. The word cannot be broken. You just have to have more understanding of the scriptures, learning with God. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, humble your attire, humble your face, humble your clothes, humble yourselves, humble your behavior, humble your attitude, humble your speech. Humble your going outs and coming ins. Humble the things. Humble yourself from proud things. Because the opposite of humble is proud. Have a humble heart, a contrite heart. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Because when you pray and you seek God's face, you'll understand. And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then God will hear you. Then he will answer you. And he won't have to go to somebody who's humble who he answers and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. When they do what? Humble themselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from their wicked ways. Then God will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. They're too proud. Isaiah 57 and 15. For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place. Holy one of Israel. Holy God. You stand on holy ground. No God is holy. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble. Who is God reviving? The spirit of the humble. And to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Proverbs 16 and 19, better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. James 4 and 6, but he gives more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. So what does God do when you humble yourself before him? He lifts you up. The proud, he brings low. The humble, what does it tell you? A man's pride shall bring him low. But what does it tell you in James 4 and 10? Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. So when you're humble, God lifts you up. When you're proud, God brings you low. Doctrine and Covenants 39 and 7. And now behold, I say unto you, my servant, James. So this is James talking about proud and humble. I have looked upon the, thy works and I know thee. This is God talking to James. Where two or three witnesses, then the statement is true. And verily I say unto thee, thy heart is now right before me. So there was a time James' heart wasn't right before God. So now God's telling him his, right is, his heart is right before him at this time. And behold, I have bestowed great blessings upon thy head. Nevertheless, thou hast seen great sorrow. God told James he's seen great sorrow. For thou hast rejected me many times because of pride. So people reject God because of pride and the cares of this world. So God told James his, his heart is now right with him. That's why James talked about being humble and resisting the proud. Let's go up some more when James 4 and 6. But he gives more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble. So there was a time when James was proud before God. Right? God told you, 
I have now looked upon thy works and I know thee. Now God knows him. Now he's, because God resists the proud, but when he humbled himself before God, God knew James. And verily I say unto thee, thy heart is now right before me. A proud heart, you resist a proud heart. Now James' heart was right before God at this time. And behold, I have bestowed great blessings upon thy head. When does God lift you up and put blessings on you? When you humble yourself before him and you're not proud. Nevertheless, God's still talking to James, thou hast seen great sorrows. Why did James see great sorrows, people of God? For thou hast rejected me many times because of the pride and the cares of this world. James rejected God many times because of pride and the cares of this world. But when he wrote his book, he was humble before God. And that's why he was, the word God gave him to teach the people was humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. But he gives more grace and Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Okay, so we're going to go to Jeremiah 13 and 15. Hear ye and give ear, be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. Micah 6 and 8. He has shown thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Proverbs 16 and 5. For everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. 